Well, good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to SEC. Um, lovely to have you uh, with us on this beautiful sunny day. Um, uh, welcome, Tim. I'm a little bit, a little bit echoey. Just a moment, thank you. Um, a particular welcome back to you if your first time here, um, David and Elaine. Lovely to see you again after so many weeks. So it's really lovely to have you um, with us. So we are going to have an all-age service together, which means we'll be in the, we'll all be here together, learning together, thinking about the next little bit of John's letter. Um, we're gonna have a couple of songs on the video, and then uh, Laura's gonna sing one song at the end. We're going to have communion, which I said was the first time in 66 weeks we have had communion in the building. And I should say a bit welcome to anybody who is watching this service at home. This is being recorded. Um, it will be up on our website and uh, some folk are, are watching live um, on Zoom now so they can share, we can share communion together whether you're in the building or whether you're watching at home. Very um, welcome this morning. After the service, uh, there'll be teas and coffees served in the garden. Um, we're sort of used to that now. We head outside and trays will be brought around with tea and coffee on. Um, if you are in the building drinking your teas and coffees, you need to be sat down in a group of no more than six. But if you're outside, um, we're a little bit freer um, to, uh, to, to stand and to talk to one another. So um, afterwards as well, there's a picnic um, at Selena's house, which is between here and um, Bick, Bickley, Butterley, uh, Bickley. And it's a beautiful spot where she is. So I know some of you are, are going to be joining us for that. Um, and uh, you'll be still welcome if you would like to. Uh, to come to that to uh, chat to me afterwards and I'll let you know the address um, or chat to Selena even better and you'll get the right address <laughs> you know. um, thank you to everybody who has been uh, working over the weekend to uh, in the garden people have been uh, putting felt on the sheds and um, out in the garden weeding and, and, and many people do so many jobs like this behind the scenes uh, so faithfully. So thank you to, to Pete for organising that and all of those who turned up and, and helped over the, the weekend. Um, we are going to begin with a song and we'll do as we, um, as, as we do, we'll stand and we can um, reflect on the words, we can hum behind our masks, um, but we will stand and we will sing from our hearts this first uh, song, which is, God is for us. Another song we've learned uh, fairly recently. So let's uh, let's stand. <laughs>
great. Um, and that song picks up on the theme of God's love for us. It says the Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. And, and we're at this uh, chapter in John's letter, which is all about God's love. And that is the theme of the service that we're going to be unpacking and thinking about over the next few minutes. So let me just pray for us now as we begin. Our loving uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your love, Father, is a strong and mighty fortress. Thank you um, that you are here with us today by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that we can meet together in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus. And as we seek to worship uh, him together, as we seek to listen and hear his words, and as we seek to be an, an encouragement and a blessing to one another, Lord, go with us, we pray this morning. Um, speak to us, Lord, through your words. And may we truly be the body of Christ in how we listen and in how we love, and in how we interact with each other this morning. We ask this for your glory. Amen. Um, so, this is a passage um, from John's letter that we are going to be looking at today. I'm going to read it for us, and then we're going to particularly focus on one verse today. So it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We'll think about that word um, in a moment. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So these are the words we're going to be looking at, where we're up to in um, this letter. And this is the one verse that we're really just going to think about together um, now. So I wonder if we can read this all together. So um, children, if you can look up and, and read this with us, and we'll all read it together. This is the first verse um, of that passage I read, 1 John 4, verse 7. Let's say this together. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So we're going to just think about this verse in kind of three sections. So the first bit, dear friends, let us love one another. Dear friends, this is a letter written to the church. It's written to Christians. And um, it says right at the start, um, and John says many times throughout the letter, that we are to love each other. But one another is the church. So we're particularly thinking about how we love our church family. If we look around the room, this is our family, this is our spiritual family, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're thinking, how do we love one another? And, um, and then we're going to sort of think partly how we can show love practically uh, to our church family. We're going to think about that a little bit later. But we've got, I found a a song which has these exact words as a memory verse song. And, and my hope is that we can all learn this verse, 1 John 4, verse 7, and we can learn this verse by memory. And this song is quite catchy and will help us do that. But here's a question. So children, you need to watch the video very carefully because I'm going to ask, what are all the ways you can see of love in the animations, in the pictures on the video? So we'll listen to this because this will help us remember this verse, but also see if you can spot how many different examples of love in the pictures on the video. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you go. Hopefully we've all got that um, verse in our memory now. So I said, what were, all the, what were the examples of love we saw in the video? Um, I've got about 10, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine. So kids, you can shout out. Let's see how many did you spot. Put your hand up or shout out, whatever you want to do. What are some of the examples of love you saw on the, pic, on the video? Yeah, Ella? Praying together, yeah, that was one. Good, praying together. Ella? Helping, helping someone. Yeah, what, how, what are they helping someone with? Groceries. Yeah, helping someone shopping with someone shopping, carrying someone shopping. So you're praying, carrying someone shopping. Let's hit these off, see if we can get them all. Uh, Alex? Yeah, putting a plaster on someone's knee. Good. What are the others? Alex can help out, can call out. You got three out of nine. Oh. <laughs> there was a parent helping a child to walk. Yes, there was someone helping a child to walk. Praying with someone, carrying someone shopping, plaster on the knee, helping a baby walk. Still got a few more. Homework. Homework, yes, yeah, someone was. It looked like someone was helping someone with their homework, didn't it? Yeah. Praying. Helping so if someone had fallen over, being helped up. Um, playing football with someone in a team. Yeah, teamwork, wasn't there? Reading the Bible with someone. Those were all of them. Oh, and then I just thought also the play the guy playing the guitar. That was that's an example of two, isn't it? <laughs> Play the guitar. Um, so, um, okay, lots of ways we can love each other. So the first bit, dear friends, let us love one another. Now the second bit of the verse says love comes from God. Love comes from God. And we're going to play a little game now. Um, and we're going to see how good you are at collective nouns for animals. Okay. <laughs> And there'll be a kind of, there'll be a slight tenuous link, but we'll see, we'll see where we go. So we've got a little quiz, and this is where your whiteboards are needed. You need to um, write down the answer if you've got it on the whiteboard and hold it up. So question one, a group of geese on the ground is called a gaggle, but what are they called in the air? Um, I guess if you want to write, you can write A, B or C on your boards. Um, a would be a flock, B, um, C, what do you think? Okay, hold up your boards if you've got it. We've got A, a flock. Has everyone said A? We've heard Lily said B. Um, everyone else has said A. Uh, no, we're all wrong. It's the second one. The skin. Um, unless they're in a V formation when it's called a wedge. <laughs> okay, uh, question two. What do you call a group of porcupines? Is it A, Brickle, uh, B, Quill, C, Barrel? Write down your answers and hold them up and then I'll get the people who haven't got boards can then shout out what they think as well. So we've got A, B, A, C. Um, people without boards, you can call out. B. It is A, a Prickle, practically. <laughs> Yeah. Appropriately named. Okay. Uh, you may, you see many things sticking out of the ocean. What do you call the oncoming sharks? A quint, a boat, or a shiver? Right. If you've got it, if you've got a board, hold up your answer. So we've got C, 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 A, C. A lot of people go for C. Other people playing along, what do you think? C. It is um, a shiver of sharks. See. Uh, okay, next one. Um, these aren't sharks. Here. Dolphins, what would you call them now? A splash of dolphins, a party of dolphins, or a school of dolphins? What do you think? A, B, or C? We've got A, we've got C, 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 A, C. Everyone said A or C. Anyone else playing along? What do we think? C. No one's got it right. No. It's B, party. Oh. Party of dolphins. Um, okay, you could have a Congress of Bush babies, a Parliament of Owls. What is a coalition made of? 
snakes, eggs, and cheetahs. So a coalition of a coalition of what do you think? Write down your answers, hold them up. Got B, we've got A, we've got A. It is quite hard, I guess. It's, what, people who are not playing along, can you call out? What do you think? It is cheaters, coalition of cheaters. Oh, where are we? Okay, six. And what's a collective of platypi? Platypus, and what are they collectively known as? Puddle, a pack, or a den? Okay, you hold up the boards. We've got a logo for A or C. Call out everyone else. A. A, it is a puddle. Correct. Seven. Okay, here comes a raft of. This is a raft of. What do we think? A penguins, B sea turtles, uh, B sea turtles, C crocodiles. A raft of. What do you think? If you've got boards, hold it up. B, B. B, uh, B, C turtles. What do other people think you can call out now? Uh, it is a raft of penguins, oh. a bale of turtles, and a basket of crocodiles. Um, so there you go. Eight. Which group is known as a smack? Which group is known as a smack? Starlings, rhinos, or jellyfish? Right, we've got B there, C, A, we'll go for all the answers, C, B, Rhino. call out, rhino, signs or jellyfish? It is, um, it is C, jellyfish, and apparently it's, apparently it's not a forest of jellyfish, as they're often thought of, it is a slab of jellyfish. Crash of rhinos, and a, mur a murmuration of starlings. Uh, and last question here then. Uh, you might be ambushed by an ambush of tigers or blessed by a blessing of narwhals, but what do you... Oh, I think this question doesn't make... What are you intruded on by? I don't think this is... Okay, I, I, I don't think this question makes sense because it's... There isn't... It's not an intrusion of any of these. Um, playing a big C... Um, BBC website. Uh, so, uh, what do we think? What, okay, what do we think these all are? Let's let's just have a guess. Cockroaches. What will the collective term be? Anyone know? A venery cockroaches. And what of spiders? I mean, this is very this is very hard, and I wouldn't have known uh, many of these, any of these probably. A spiders is a skittering, and a, a what of mice? A mischief, a mischief of mice. Um, okay, there you go. So it was that was rather um, that was rather difficult as it turned out. Um, but as we're looking at our um, verse, well, the second bit of our verse says, "For love comes from God." And, well, here's here's a question: What might we call? Um, we we think we think about God. We think about how the Father is God. How the Son, Jesus Christ, is God, and the, how the Holy Spirit is God. And we know God is made of these three persons of the Trinity, who are all gods. But what might we call the persons of the Trinity and how they relate together to one another? Well, it says in, the, it says in our verse quite a bit. And look at this. Um, it's, it's love. It's perfect love. There is love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and there always has been. And this little diagram just reminds us that, that there are three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are all God, and who all um, exist together in perfect, in perfect love. And there's a verse in um, John's Gospel, John 17, that um, Jesus says, the Father has loved the Son since before the creation of the world. So, well, I've just answered my question. I was going to ask, what has God been doing for all eternity? What has God been doing even before he created the universe, even before he ran and, and controlled the world? God has been loving. God has always been loving. Love is who God is. God is 
um, love, perfect love. And this perfect love between the Father, the Son, and the unity in the, in, in, in the Spirit. So, so this, um, this diagram uh, here helps us think about that. And if we think about, um, the, the, the verse says that God is the origin of love. It says, if you look at verse um, uh, eight, it, well, at verse 7, it says love comes from God. Love is from God, but it says more than that. And look at the end of verse 8, it says because God is love. God is love. God is a definition of love and we might say someone is loving mightn't we? we we would say i would say laura is loving very loving in how she puts up with me and, and everything else and we can show our love in so many different ways and I, we, we might say someone is loving but i don't think i would say laura is love because to be love is to be the kind of completeness of all that is loving all the time perfectly pure in all of our motives and our words and our actions always and of course god is the only one who is pure love so we see love comes from god god is love and um and and also we can see how how jesus we see this in these verses jesus is the perfect example of love because um if we look at verse uh, if we look at verse 9, let me read that verse 9 and think, are there any other verses in the Bible that this verse sounds a little bit similar to? So verse 9, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Any verses that sounds a little bit similar to? John, yeah, John 3.16, God so loves the world, he gave, he sent... Okay. Um, God so loved the world that he gave his only son um, that whoever believes in him shall not die but have eternal life. And we see that in this verse only in verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his only one and only son into us that we might live through him. We might have life through Jesus. So Jesus, God is love. Jesus, God shows his love by sending Jesus into the world so that through trusting in him we can have life forever with him. And verse, not, verse 10 really just spells out what that love looks like. So just look at me at verse 10. It says, this is love. Not that, we, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. It's also, it's often translated as the atoning sacrifice for our sins, but the word actually means, it, it is this word, propitiation. Now, who you heard of if you used the word propitiate, oh, propitiation in the last week? <laughs> no, in the last month? You propitiate anything? No, okay, it's not a word that we um, think of very much. So we probably think, what on earth does that word um, propitiation for our sins mean but we're going to use that one we're going to think about what it means so i want you um kids just to watch this video well all of us there's a there's a um it's, it's, it's about two minutes and there's a great uh example and demonstration that helps us think about what this word propitiation means okay so let's watch this video Show us what the Lord has done Through Jesus, his own son Be words, be words Let him shout Hey kids, today's big word that ends in shun is propitiation So in a short sentence, that means God's anger turns away Woohoo! Mm -hmm. When God is angry about our bad behaviour and the bad things we've done, he turns his anger away from us. Now to try and explain this big word that ends in shun, I've asked my housemate Gemma to help me act out a little story. It's not true, but I think it will be really helpful for understanding propitiation. Let's go. I live at Gemma's place which is by the beach, and it's really nice when it's uh, sunny because there's lots to do outside, but it is boring when it's raining. And I, I love living here, and Gemma just has a couple of rules, and one of them is no skateboarding inside the house. Well, one day it was raining, and I didn't know what to do, and Gemma wasn't home, so I thought, you know what? She'll never find out. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Immediately, I realized I'd made a huge mistake. Gemma had told me not to skateboard inside, and I disobeyed her. And then I broke the TV and my skateboard. I told Gemma that it was an accident. But she said, an accident? You knew you weren't allowed to skateboard inside, and you did it anyway. Our friendship <laughs> can't be the same until the TV is replaced and the skateboard is fixed. Well, the thing is, I didn't know how to fix a skateboard, let alone have money to be able to pay for a new TV. So Gemma was mad and she was angry. It was all my fault. There was nothing I could do about it. I know that I had done the wrong thing by her, but I also didn't know how to make things right. Well, when I finally came out of my room, something amazing happened. I saw Gemma and she herself was fixing my skateboard. And she bought a new TV. She wanted to turn her anger away from me so much that she fixed the mistake that I had made. Okay. okay. Uh, did you spot what was what was her definition of propitiation? John, what did she say propitiation means? Four or five words, four or five words. What? Yeah, Alex? Yeah. That's wrong. Ella? Yeah, well, brilliant. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. God's anger turned away. Woohoo! That's what she said. And that's, um, and she demonstrated it, didn't she, in that story about her uh, skateboarding, breaking the rules, skateboarding, messing up the house, and then her um, person she lived with um, forgiving her and sorting out the mess herself. And that is what propitiation is. That is, um, it's true that God is angry at us. He created a beautiful world for us. He, he created us in his image. And we have, all of us, turned our back on God. None of us have followed his rules or have, have lived with God as a king, as the centre of our lives. All of us have, to one extent, tried to be king ourselves. We've kind of done things that have hurt other people or said things that have been unkind. And we've lived our own way. And the Bible says that the consequence of that sin, of that turning away from God, is death and is separation from God. And so this is the wonderful news of Jesus. So in a minute, we're going to remember as we share communion together that God shows his love to us through this, through what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because Jesus took our place he takes the death and the separation that we deserve for our sin and the way we have lived away from God, trying to be king of our own lives. He took the punishment we deserve upon himself and he paid for it in full. So that word propitiation that comes in our, in our verse there, it means that God's anger, rather than being directed towards us, it was met by Jesus on the cross. It was paid for in full and we can now be forgiven. And we can have be friends with God, in perfect relationship with God, because Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. And this, is, of course, is, is the most amazing act of love ever. This is love, verse 10. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The one who turns God's anger away from us because Jesus bore it on the cross in our place. So that is the, the most incredible love. And we just I just want to think about um, this because if this is a pattern for how we are to love others if we're to love others like Jesus has loved us then that's pretty hard right that's pretty hard isn't it but here's a, the last bit of the verse it says everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God and I think part of what this is saying is if we are to love each other sacrificially like Jesus, that is kind of impossible by ourselves. It's only possible if we have been born again, if we've been born of God and, and know God. It is only through the help of the Holy Spirit as he works in us that we can share this, this kind of sacrificial love with one another. And of course, as, as John's letter says time and time again, it is a sign that we are truly a Christian, that we will have love for each other. It is a sign that we belong to Jesus. We will seek to, to be loving towards one another. And I just wanted to think about this for a moment. What does Jesus-shaped love look like in practice? 
and I'm going to give you 30 seconds just to talk to the person you're with or the person next to you or near you and just just 30 seconds what does Jesus shaped love look like in practice you can think about it you can just talk to the person next to you 30 seconds and then I'll ask for a bit of feedback and then we'll wrap things up so there you go 30 seconds <laughs> There you go, that was your 30 seconds. Uh, you can carry on the conversations later, but just any thoughts? What did we say? What does this Jesus shaped love look like in practice? Not expecting anything. Turn. Yeah, not expecting anything in return. That's really, that's really true, isn't it, Ella? Caring, yeah. Any other thoughts, Alex? Yeah, great. And uh, adults, any thoughts? What does Jesus say that look in practice? Yeah, I, I, yeah, help. Yeah, I think I, I, I just put a couple of things. Um, here that I think, um, as I was reflecting on this, if we love one another, we, in, and, and that is the core of this verse, we must prioritise, there's a few things I've come from what, what we prioritise, meeting with people, if we're to love each other, we, we have to kind of meet together, and, and yes, obviously with Covid that's not been possible, um, but we have to kind of think creatively about how we meet with people, but we certainly have to meet together, we have to be together if we are to love one another, and it, it's, 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 um, it's just such an encouragement when people prioritise meeting with other Christians over other things. You know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to turn down that social event, whatever it may be, because I want to be at home group or at church or because I want to be there with God's people. It's, it's, it's so, um, uh, it, it's so kind of fundamental, I guess, to, to, to who we are as a church, as a family. I'm praying for God's people. And, and I know how many people do that, use the... Um, the, 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 the wonderful um, news sheet that's produced for us each month to pray for even just one or two people come to mind each day as we're spending time with God, to be praying for each other. The, the um, prayer requests via the email or the WhatsApp um, has, been, has been a wonderful way of sharing and, and keeping in touch, giving generously to God's people. I know that happens week by week um, as people give, but it's something to, to think about, isn't it? Um, and it's it's always something to be thinking about as our income goes up. Uh, how how do we spend what we have? Um, how can we give sacrificially? And I know so many do via standing orders and things to the church. Um, but we, we give generously to serve God's people. Um, and well, that's the other thing I said. They're serving God's people again. People who gave up their Saturday and their Friday to be here in the garden, or people who give up Friday night to help with youth club or um, so many ways it's not just the kind of formal things it's the, the informal things the, the ways people just draw alongside each other and, and help each other in love making time for God's people um, through all the different ways and all the different ideas that, that we have um, to show God's love with each other and that was the thing that John said not expecting anything back we we don't do it to, to get back um, and often as Jesus demonstrates he just loved unconditionally he gave himself for us not for what he could get back but in love and and that is what we do that is as we do these things as we love each other um, and maybe and um, we can just all think of you know just just one thing this week um to share god's love with with somebody else who's part of our church family one thing we can do i know we are um a wonderfully loving uh, community and, but it's good just to think about, and, we, and it's such a key theme of John's letter, it comes up over and over again. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And it's great to be reminded of that, God's love, seen in the Lord Jesus, as we're about to remember. Um, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. How can we love sacrificially like Jesus? It's impossible by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit. It's only as we know God's love that we can love each other in this Jesus-shaped way. Um, we are going to, I'm not going to 
put you through the whole of this song again. We'll just watch a few, um, a short bit of the song this time, just so it's in our minds, um, and then we're going to come to communion. We're going to come back uh, at the end of the service and see if we remembered uh, 1 John, or 1 John as we tend to say in this country, uh, 1 John uh, 4 verse 7. So we'll see if we, how we get on with that. But um, we are, it's, it's very exciting because after such a long time of not being, um, having communion in the building, we are about to uh, share the Lord's Supper communion um, together. And in a few minutes, um, the way we will do it is um, John and myself are going to serve down one aisle. And if you would like, we have some pre-cut pieces of bread and some tongs, if you would like to, to share. And this is for anyone who loves Jesus, anyone who is a Christian, if you have committed your life to, to Jesus, whichever kind of denomination or background you come from, you're welcome to share this um, with us. If you um, hold your hand out, we will drop with tongs um, the piece of bread onto your hands and then you can obviously lift your mask up to um, eat the bread. And then we will come round after that with the cups, um, which are spaced out on the tray. We will hold the tray. And if you can just pick a, a, a cup with the wine and hang on to that, and then we'll drink together at the end. So that is how it, it will sort of work in a, a COVID secure way. Uh, the bread has been pre-cut and we're not touching any of it um, together now. But, um, if you're at home watching, then hopefully you've got some uh, bread and some wine. You're able to join and share this with us in real time, which is which is wonderful. We're able to do that today. Now, um, as we think about this, um, Jesus, before he died on the cross to show his love to us, he was having a meal with his disciples and he took the bread um, and he broke it. He took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks to his father and he said um, this body is my this this bread is my body that i give for you he said do this in remembrance of me and then after supper he took the cup of wine and he uh, and he gave thanks and he said this is my blood of the new covenant which is for you drink this in remembrance of me and it's something that he has told us to do to continue doing until Jesus returns and that is why um, obviously it's been more difficult with Covid and not meeting together but that is why Christians prioritise sharing communion together regularly um, as, as a way of eating and actually not just remembering but actually taking something and eating something and just reminding us of um, the, the reality of what is true. And it's almost a time when as we take and eat the bread, we can say to God, yes, I, I want to just recommit my life to you. You are my Lord. You are my saviour. I love you and I thank you. And I want to follow you with everything this week. You are my king. You are number one in my life. And it's a way of just saying that and remembering as we eat and drink together. And this, these verses, I think, really help us um, verse 10 there, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave, sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the one to turn God's anger away from us because Jesus bore it um, in our place 
on the cross. And so we say, we look back, we say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. And the verse nine, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one only son into the world that we might live through him. We also remember the eternal life, life with Jesus that lasts beyond our time on earth, that lasts for all eternity. And so there's a sense in communion as well as looking back and remembering and saying thank you. We also look forward and we um, look forward to that time when Jesus will come back and we will eat and drink with him in this heavenly party that will continue forever. So let me pray and then we will serve um, the bread and the wine. Father, thank you so much that you are such a loving God. You have shown us your love by sending Jesus. And we thank you that as we eat and drink together now, we can remember his sacrificial love for us. We thank you that our sin has been dealt with by Jesus. And thank you that as we come to you in faith, you forgive us our sin, you um, reconcile us, you bring us back into relationship with you, God. And um, we thank you for the way you bless us and you forgive us and you walk with us through life. And one day we'll eat and drink in your presence for all eternity, enjoying the eternal life you give us. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for the, the, the bread that reminds us of Jesus' body given for us. Thank you for the wine that reminds us of his blood shed for us. And thank you for the new life and the forgiveness, the hope and the eternal confidence we have because of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. to the cups and drink together at the end.
so let's drink together and remember the blood of our Lord Jesus shed for us. Amen. Um, we're just going to have a moment to pray and we can continue to thank God for his love to us, for his help to love one another. So let's, uh, let's pray. We'll just have a moment of, of just quiet first where we can reflect and we can pray and talk to God from our own hearts. So, Father, we thank you that we've been able to remember today your great love for us, that you sent your one and only son, Jesus, so we can have life through him. Thank you for that example of love, as Jesus laid down his life for us, so your anger at our sin was turned away because Jesus paid in full. And we thank you that we can have forgiveness and new life now because of Jesus. So we thank you for loving us like this. And I pray for each of us that you would help us to love one another. Please help us this week when it's difficult, when we test it, to think less of ourselves and to think more of each other. And I pray that you would show us practical ways we can express the love of Jesus in how we relate to others, in how we meet with others, in how we talk to others, in how we give to others, in how we serve others. We need your help. We need your Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would work in each of us, Lord, to live out these lives of love that you've called us to, that are only possible because we've been born again, born of you. And so go with each of us, Lord, help us. <coughs> to live out lives of love, safe in the wonderful knowledge and assurance of your great love for us that never changes, never ends, that never stops, despite how much we may mess up and get things wrong. Lord, we say sorry, sorry when we have been selfish, sorry when we thought only of ourselves. Teach us how to love like Jesus, and we thank you again for your great love for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, okay, we're going to see if we can remember the verse. Um, so, <laughs> um, we will say, um, where is the verse? Let me get it back. And we will go, I'll go back to it in a second. But let's see if we can say our memory verse <clears throat> together. So, um, over to you. Let's go for it. Dear friends. Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Where is it from? 1 John 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4 verse 7. Fantastic. Now we're going to finish with the final song um, which Laura's going to come and sing and I don't have the words on the screen. Okay. Mm. If we just leave the cups where they are. Yeah, afterwards we'll leave the cups on the um, on your chairs and somebody will um, and, and we, we pray. So after this song feel free to head into the garden where teas and coffees will be brought to you. Feel free to, to go out of the door at the back if, um, if you need to. Leave your cups uh, where they are and um, they'll be collected. <laughs> Tried by sinful men, torn and 
Crush to the 